Good morning, John. Today, I have a very special encounter to share with you. Late last night, a creature happened upon my camp. A creature of such eccentric peculiarity and uniqueness that all were taken aback by its presence. It is the Dan Brown. And though the Dan Brown's odd behavior has been well documented in its natural habitat, here we have some of the first footage ever captured of the Dan Brown outside of his natural habitat. Though most of the Dan's time seems to be spent in a sedentary sitting position, poking at this antique instrument of his, the one you see here I believe is from 2007, the Dan will occasionally break from this sedentary life and suddenly will be performing one of his many bizarre displays. The function of these displays has been debated for decades by scientists studying the Dan. Some believe the displays exist to attract a mate, though there is strong evidence that the displays have, in fact, had the opposite effect. Others believe that the Dan is scratching some subconscious itch that can only be reached by mastering complex yet meaningless activities. Whatever the case, the displays of the Dan are breathtaking in their visual and auditory complexity. John, I know you know who Dan Brown is, but there may be some people watching this who do not know who Dan Brown is. He is not the guy that wrote the Da Vinci Code. Dan Brown is a video blogger, very similar to us. He has a similar style and similar values to us, which makes him kind of a kindred spirit. But he's got a color for a last name too, but it's not green, so he's not our brother, but he is Dan Brown. So Dan has just started this project, and the idea of the project is that he is giving over his life to the people who watch him. He's letting his community kind of decide what he should do for the next year of his life. Whether it's little projects like write a letter to the president or bigger projects like fly out to Missoula, Montana and record a song with Hank Green. That idea was suggested by me and it rose to the top of his decision engine. And then like a week later he was at the Missoula airport and I went and picked him up. Pretty freaking cool actually. I think Dan 3.0 was fascinating for like 20 different reasons and some of those 20 reasons are reasons why I would never want to do this but some of the 20 reasons are reasons why I would really like to. Lots of people are kind of treating it like it's a cute stunt for a guy to do for a year. But talking to Dan, and I hope he doesn't mind if I say this, it's clear that Dan Brown doesn't know what to do with his life. And I think a lot of us don't know what to do with our lives. And that's really scary. And it feels like other people have got it all figured out, but they don't. And once you do know what you're doing with your life, it's really boring. Trust me, I've been there. And Dan is convinced that the people who watch him, his community will make better decisions than he would on his own. So in effect, I think Dan is doing what a lot of us wish we could do, which is say, help me figure out what to do with this. Anyway, happy left-handed day. I'm not left-handed personally, but I had a teacher in middle school, one of my favorite teachers of all time. She grew up in Czechoslovakia and went to Catholic school and they beat her for being left-handed and she wrote with her right hand her entire life because of this. So if ever you left-handers feel oppressed, just think of Miss Chismadia. And another handedness related side note, I could not tell my right from left until I was about nine due to a learning disability that I have. But then when I was nine, I cut my hand on a piece of terracotta pottery. It did some nerve damage, it severed a tendon, and to this day it aches constantly. It, it never stops aching. But because I have this permanent pain in my right hand, I always know that the one that hurts is the right. And so now I know my right from left. Hoo-ha! Nerd fighters. John, I will see you on Monday.